In January 2019, Xi Jinping said Taiwan's unification with China is inevitable by all necessary means. Soon after that, Chinese aircrafts started to fly inside Taiwan's air defense zone, called ADIZ, or Air Defense Identification Zone. They didn't stop there. There were dozens of flyovers through this region per week, hundreds of flyovers per month, and they are flying continuously since then. China wants the world to believe in one China policy, that there is only one China and Taiwan is a part of it. But why is China so obsessed with this tiny island? And why do they want it so badly? China enacted a law that justifies their view on Taiwan's reunification, the anti-secession law, which says to prevent any part or territory of it to break away from mainland China. Article 1 of this law states the aim of the law is to prevent Taiwan's secession from China and promote unification. Article 2-4 to outlined the Chinese government's view of the present political status of Taiwan. This view is that mainland China and Taiwan belong to one China, that there is one China and that the sovereignty of that one China is indivisible. The Taiwan issue is a residual problem of the Chinese Civil War and is an internal affair of China. Article 5 maintains that the One China principle is the basis for resolution of the issue and that the state must seek all possibilities of peaceful reunification. The same section also states that following peaceful reunification, Taiwan will enjoy a high level of autonomy and operate under a system different from mainland China and remain under one country, two system scheme. Article 6 deals with cross-strait relations. It states that in order to maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits and to foster cross-strait relationship, the state should encourage people-to-people -people relation and understanding, encourage cross-strait economic and cultural exchanges, and joint efforts to fight crime. Article 7 deals with cross-strait negotiation. It states that the state shall support negotiations and consultations on both sides of the straits with equal status with different modalities and in different stages. Article 8 deals with non-peaceful action and is the article which has caused the most controversy and attention. It states that the state shall use non-peaceful and other necessary means under these alternative conditions. If Taiwan independence forces succeed in separating Taiwan from China using whatever name and strategy, or if a major event occurs which would lead to Taiwan's separation from China, or if all possibility of peaceful unification is lost. Article 9 states that in the planning and implementation of non-peaceful and other necessary actions, the state must, as much as possible, act to protect the persons and property of Taiwanese civilians and foreigners in Taiwan and to minimize their losses. But what is the story behind the scenes? Why does China want Taiwan? And how did they end up here? From the year 1624 to 1661, Taiwan remained under the control of the Dutch. It was a Dutch colony throughout these years. From 1683 to 1895, for around 200 years, Taiwan was ruled by Chinese Qing Dynasty. During this time period, Chinese migrants came to Taiwan and settled there permanently. Those migrants came from Fujian, province of China, and today they recognized as Hoklo Chinese. In 1895, during the First Sino-Japanese War, Japan defeated the Qing Dynasty in Taiwan. In 1912, it was the time of Xinhai Revolution. During the revolution, the Qing Dynasty was overthrown and the Republic of China came to power. But Taiwan still remained under Japanese control. In 1945, during the Second World War, Japan was forced out from Taiwan and its control was given to China by agreement of UK and US. In 1947, anti-government protests were started in Taiwan for its independence from China, which did not go as planned, where Chinese government did a huge massacre and nearly 25,000 people were killed. This was marked as a pivotal point in the modern-day Taiwan crisis. 1949, it was a time of Chinese civil war. Mao Zedong's Communist Party won against Chiang Kai-shek's KMT party. After that, Chiang Kai-shek and KMT supporters left China and fled to Taiwan. And there they formed a new government, also known as Government in Exile, which remains in power for 25 years in Taiwan. During this time period, China was a strict communist and Taiwan was a strict capitalist. And during the Cold War, the US didn't recognize the Communist Party in China. They recognized Taiwanese government in exile, and they were called the real Chinese government. 
The United Nations also didn't recognize the Chinese Communist Party, and therefore China's National Security Council seat belonged to Taiwan. It was remained until 1971, when the United Nations switched its decision and recognized the Communist Party as a real Chinese government. In 1976, after the death of Mao Zedong, the new president was elected, Deng Xiaoping, and he turned out to be a good leader. In 1978, China experienced new economic reforms, and the Chinese economy was open to the rest of the world during this time. In 1979, after these economic reforms, U.S. made diplomatic ties with China. Now, more and more countries recognize Taiwan as a part of China and not as an independent country. The U.S. also passed legislation in the same year that if China invades Taiwan, the U.S. will help Taiwan, though U.S. didn't recognize Taiwan as an independent country. So the U.S.'s role was a bit confusing back then. They wanted to be at some distance from both China and Taiwan. Clearly, they didn't want to take any sides. 1988, the dictator Xiang Xing Kuo died, who was the son of Chiang Kai-shek. After this, major changes were happening in Taiwan. New president was elected, Li Teng-hui. He made constitutional changes, and Taiwan had experienced democratic growth for the first time. In 1989, China also was very close to democracy, but didn't succeed against the Communist Party and remained the dictatorship. In 2000, the first democratic elections were conducted in Taiwan, and the first non-KMT president was elected, Chen Shui-bian, and he demanded the full independence from China, where today KMT still wants Taiwan to join China. Fast forward to 2013, Xi Jinping was elected as the president of China, and ever since then, the China and Taiwan crisis has never gone lower than this. In 2016, DPP, or the Democratic Progressive Party, came into power in Taiwan. And Tsai Ing-wen was elected as a first female president of Taiwan. Now, she turned out to be a very good leader and a representative of Taiwan at the international stages. She was selected in 2020 again for a second term. Today, Taiwan has the third best democracy in Asia and the 32nd worldwide. On the other side, China remains communist till today. In 2018, the Chinese government introduced a law that will allow Xi Jinping to be elected for a third time. To be elected as the president of China for a third time, he needs his good image in front of the 20th National Congress. So he'll do anything to get control over Taiwan. And then in 2019, he got out to say, Taiwan's unification with China is inevitable by all necessary means. In 2022, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, visited Taiwan, and she was the highest-ranked U.S. officer to visit Taiwan till the date. Despite the warning from China, Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan anyway. Xi Jinping commented on this incident that those who play with fire will perish by it. We told you before that U.S. never recognized Taiwan as an independent nation, though the U.S. still supplies weapons to Taiwan. Joe Biden said recently that they believed in one China policy, but will not stand any kind of non-peaceful invasion over Taiwan. Today, Chinese and American relationships are at an all-time low. U.S. is helping Taiwan unofficially because it is an important ally of the U.S. But on the other hand, it doesn't support Taiwan's independence. So this was a story behind the modern-day Taiwan crisis. What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like clicking buttons and subscribing to things, this is the best time there has ever been. Go ahead, click the button. Make sure you subscribe.